Mr. McDonald Show. Yes, another Friday night here live from Portland on TalkCast PDX. We're on Facebook Live, we're on YouTube Live, and we are on Twitch right now. And we're glad that you could join us, uh, having ourselves a good time. Hope you're having a good time as well. i got a couple of great guests tonight. I'm looking forward to chatting with them. We're going to have Celia Behar here, and we're also going to have Leather Stores here as well. And we're pretty excited about it. I'm, uh, I'm ready. It's been a long week, you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and join Celia Behar. She's joining us live from Los Angeles, California. All right, welcome to the Justin McDonald Show. It's another Friday night, and uh, we have a couple of great guests tonight. I'm excited. This is just like my way to blow off steam. This is my solo project. <laughs> I'm always got to be so serious during the week, during news and things like that. It's kind of nice to just hang out on a Friday night and have people have uh, brewskis and tokeskis and all the stuff they want to do and hang out and watch the show. So, um, And with me is Celia Behar. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. And we're on a Zoom call. So if something drops out or something goes, it's just the nature of the game nowadays. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think with all of broadcasting, everybody's doing the Zoom thing or the Google meeting or the Skype thing. Um, tell folks a little bit about how uh, about yourself. Now, we met a few years ago um, and we got together and you came on my podcast. At that time, I had a different podcast that was mostly about cannabis and yeah, we talked yeah. about cannabis and parenting and things like that but you're a life coach and you do so many other things and you got another podcast going on you got a lot happening just just tell it's people a little cool. bit about yourself uh quickly well i yep i'm a life coach i'm a, I'm a licensed therapist um as well a mental health counselor and um i became a life coach when i got out to california in part because uh my license wouldn't transfer but then i actually found that i could use all of my uh, various counseling training and to sort of mush it into one thing and mm -hmm. help people, you know, get empowered and live the life that they really want and work through, you know, past issues and traumas and move forward. Um, on top of that, I run a, um, I, I co-run a, a mama um, private secret Facebook group that's not so private and secret, honestly. <laughs> because we we frequently make the news because we get we get things done because moms get things done right um, i even know about this group yeah the little mamas the little, yeah. Yeah. we do some <laughs> cool shit um actually we just got um we made so much noise about one of our mamas has a, a little boy that's fighting um brain cancer oh. he's obsessed with aquaman and we made so much noise about it that we got jason momoa to call him and do oh that's amazing call. It's pretty awesome to see it. Um, anyway, so that's the little mamas, and and I I co-run that uh, with my um, my friend Allison Porter, and um, and then I have a podcast with Joe. Oh, I lost, best friend, I lost you there just for a second. He dropped oh. out just for a second yeah, there. I, so sorry about happens, that. Right? It happens. No, it's don't. just one of the things that we have to deal with. Uh, I know. I know. But you, you were just getting ready to say you also have a podcast with your yeah. friend uh, Jody Sweeten. Right. Yeah, my best friend Jody Sweet and I have a, a podcast called Never Thought I'd Say This. Uh, <laughs> I like it. All, yeah, it's all the things that we say as parents that we like can't believe came out of our mouths. You yeah. just don't prepare to ever have to say to your child, please don't put the crayon up the dog's butt. He doesn't <laughs> like it. And yet, uh, I could see that. Uh, my kids are a little older now, uh, 20 and 15. It's, uh, uh -huh. But I loved them when they were little, though. We, we'd always, it was a much more fun experience, I thought. I mean, I love it now, but uh, when they were little, they would just do the craziest things. And yeah. that's, that's the cool part, you know, like you said, don't stick the crayon up the dog's butt. I mean, you know, I like get happening. mouth off the toilet. Like, why did I have to say that? Why are you like, why? You know, no, you don't need to look at your sister's poop is something I've said. <laughs> so yeah. you, you do a lot of things. You got a lot of things going on. Um, yeah. That L.A. lifestyle, right? That's just go, go, go. Right. You're always going. Yeah. Right. Am I right? Yes, it's true. Yeah. yeah see, in Oregon, it's more like Hawaii here in Oregon. Everybody here is on kind of a I'll get there when I can get there type of thing. Oh, what time is that appointment? 1130? Oh, yeah. More going to be more like 1215. Well, I will say that in LA, things are more lax in that sense, too. I remember when I first moved out here from New York, which is, yeah. you know, you oh, say yeah. you're going to be someplace in New York, you're fucking there. Like, you're in New That's York. Yeah. Um, and uh, and maybe you're late because the subway or whatever, but you're going to be there. And the first time I ever uh, had to go to a meeting, like I took a meeting with somebody uh, in LA, and I got there way before Allie, and I called her, and I'm like, 
why are you? Like the meeting's at 11.30. And her response was, oh, you're cute. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that go, go, go thing. Uh, I don't know. I can't. I mean, I can handle it, but I much prefer to be a little more relaxed. That's uh, the Oregon way, I guess. It's the way. It's you a, know, that's it's just, I'm, I've never been someone that can sit back and relax, honestly. I think that's why I became an ad, you know, I'm a cannabis advocate. I have been, you know, for parents. Uh, I think that's why I, you know, I was drawn to it because it helps me actually like relax because otherwise yeah. it's just my personality, I think, to just kind of go, go, go and do a lot. I also really, really like to, um, to help people. So it's hard for me to say no, when I see that somebody needs help that I want to mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. get involved. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. That stigma though, is still out there a little bit. Uh, the parents and cannabis, yeah. I mean, you just see it uh, quite a bit still. And I, I don't understand it. I mean, it shouldn't be that big a deal now. I mean, you just like go to the store whenever you want, get some cannabis. It's all good. Right. Uh, right. Problem. You're going to the liquor store, you're pounding beers, whatever, you know, come on. Right. Uh, you know, I've never met, an, uh, an uncivil person who uses cannabis. I mean, there's yep. a couple out there. I know there's a couple out there that, that think they're civil, but they're yeah. not. But uh, that whole stigma of the parent thing, do you still find that just as a day-to-day challenge trying to use, is it always a battle? Is it always going to be a battle? I mean, I don't know if it's always going to be. I hope not. I think it's a little more normalized. I notice more and more that, you know, my clients will talk to me about it. Uh, people reach out to me online, you know, and are like, I'm considering this. And it's people that when I first started talking about it were, you know, appalled and thought it was awful. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, let's talk about it. So, but <laughs> I started- a little bit about that CBD, you know. You yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Well, but, you know, that's the thing. If you ever, if I, you know, if you ever go on my Instagram page, uh, you know, and any, you know, there are posts I've had up where people, mm-hmm just will like attack me and you know say things like oh you must be stoned that you posted this and it's like really that's where you're going with this like so yeah I think there's still a stigma for people that you know are are out about it and parents but my you know my kids are so aware of it and they know about it and I you know they would never get into my liquor and they would never get into the cannabis like by the way both of those things are locked up so they really could in any way but they you know, they, they get it. They get it. At the end of a day, I just told this story to a client right before we got on this call. At the end of a day, last week, I reached for um, a gummy because I'd had, su- it was such a hard, long day. And my yeah. da- oldest daughter, who's 14, just looked at me and said, oh, thank God. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> can you not eat that fast enough? Please go, 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 go. <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, really? I've been that sick. Like, okay. <laughs> Tell me how Sorry. you feel, child. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, exactly. So, so, okay. We, so we know we're battling that stigma all the time. Is this something that you, uh, you and Jody talk about every now and then on your podcast? Uh, yeah. Um, is it, does it come up? Um, I'm just wondering how mainstream show. we're getting here. Um, we, we did a whole show on, on this specifically. We actually had um, uh, Jill Trincaro from, um, she's uh, the creator in Oregon of um, SDK. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So Jill is a really close friend of mine and has become a close friend of, um, of Jody's. Uh, Jill and I actually started a CBD line together that we have, um, which is called Mellow Out Mama. Um, oh, I like yeah. that name, Mellow Out Mama. And it becomes <laughs> M-O-M, Mellow Out Mama. Um, and, uh, and we have some products that we designed, you know, specifically for, for moms. And we did a whole show um, about Jill's experience with cannabis um, you know, why she decided to make cookies in microdosing form and, and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, Jody is very publicly uh, sober and um, she doesn't partake in any of that, but she's super, super supportive of what I do. Um, and she understands that it's a, a medicine and she, you know, mm-hmm. completely backs uh, the cannabis industry. She gets it. She gets it. She, yeah, she totally. I mean, she absolutely gets it. You know, she gets why someone won't have a glass of wine. She's, but she's sober. She's been sober for I think eight or nine years now, and a long uh, time. I know her backstory a little bit too. I'm a big fan, and uh, which is just kicks it kicking the pants at your her best friend, which is kind I, of cool. I mean, not that I, I, I we love you and we like you as well, um, but it, it is kind of cool that you have a 
it's a it's a famous best that, friend i guess I, yeah it's a strange experience i'll say sometimes you know when we used to be able to go out places not that we can now um you know, <laughs> but when yeah. we used to go out to places like we we were once at universal we took the kids to universal and uh and like we got off a ride and some people were talking to her as soon as we walked out and i just turned to her older daughter and i was like oh do you like you know, do you know them? And she was like, <laughs> no. And I was like, well, why are they? Oh, right. Like, I forget that pe yeah. you know, people <laughs> people look at her and they come up, to, come up to her and they're like, oh my God, I grew up with you. Like, and she's like, great. You know, <laughs> Just, you know? how are the Tanners really like? I'd be like, how is Stamos to hang out with? That's what I'd be asking. I just finished up the last season of Fuller House finally. And oh, yeah. it was kind of sad, you know? I was like, I know. oh. I know. It was sad. Well, I, I've spent a little, I've not spent a lot of time with John, but the small amount of time I've spent with John, I've, I've enjoyed it. And uh, his wife is uh, lovely and beautiful and hilarious. And I really liked her. And yeah, uh, I spent some time with awesome. Andrea Barber, uh, Kimmy Gibbler. She's fantastic. Um, one of my favorites on the show too. Uh, you she's know. really honestly one of the nicest people and hilarious. Like she's really funny. She was on our show um, as well. And uh we taught her what tossing a salad meant. She didn't know. And we were both, we we both just like died laughing and told her <laughs> what it was. So, um, well, that's yeah. cool. Um, it's yeah. Fun, you know? Yeah. It, that's, I think it's neat. And it sounds like they're just all so down to earth and so cool. I mean, I've even made the trek to San Francisco to go see the house. Oh, know, that's so funny. I've done that. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but it's just one of my yeah. favorite shows. You know, I, I, I'm kind of, you know, kind of a manly man kind of thing, but I used to love like, you know, Full House, all those uh, sitcoms uh, during that era. I always kind of dug them all, but Full House was always kind of, I'm going to watch this, I'm going to watch this. <laughs> you know, it was always it's, great. It was, it's a great, it, it's a great show and it made every, I think it was like a really good feel good show. My kids still like to watch the yeah. old, they get a really big kick out of, you know, seeing Jody when she's little, they can't really like make the connection that that's Auntie Jody, you know, like they're like, yeah. what the hell? Like it's strange to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you watched uh, Step by Step, but I'm. Um, yep. So I, one of my other close friends is Christine Lakin. We became friends. Really? Through, yeah. That's <laughs> we became so friends cool. Through. We were just Jody and I were just on. Uh, she's a podcast um, with uh, th this guy Allah, who's hilarious. Um, it's called uh, Not Maybe Not the Worst Podcast. I want to say. Um, maybe not the worst podcast. It's, called not the worst podcast it's either the worst <laughs> podcast or not the word worst podcast and if she ever listens to this she's gonna kick me um but yeah and, and i uh she's she was friends with my boyfriend before i met him so uh and he my boyfriend's really good friends with her husband so we I get gotcha. to spend time with them and everybody knows everybody every it kind of it kind of is that way it yeah. kind of is that way and it is weird you know i I was my business partner Allison Porter was Curly Sue in the movie Curly Sue. Yeah, I was. Just, I did a little Curly. Google search uh, when you said that. I had somebody do a Google search. Yeah, like, that's who she, and she won season ten of The Voice. And I've known Allie since she was fourteen wow. years old. Um, and now I just joke about the fact that, like, you know, I have a propensity to have ch you know child stars as friends. Apparently, like, I didn't know. That you have that all the good child stars. You know, the ones that are safe and sane. It sane, It sounds like. Yes. Uh, yes. They have a bad yeah. reputation, poor child stars. And I know there's a bunch of good ones out there. Uh, yeah. But they do have a poor uh, reputation in Hollywood, unfortunately. You no, know, I think it's a hard job. I can't imagine the pressure that is, you know, put on on people. Um, Especially but, if you're a little kid. A little yeah, kid. you know, no. you, Jody was super lucky. She's got parent. Her parents are amazing. I love them uh, dearly, and uh, and she, you know, she's just Jody's just done so much work on herself, and she's such an amazing human being. I feel unbelievably blessed to have her in my life, and you know, uh, as you know, my I lost my sister, who was my best friend, um, mm, a couple yeah. years ago, and it was really, you know my friends uh, that got me through it. And, and Jody was, you know, honestly, like there with me every step of the way. And she has become my surrogate sister and, um, and her family in as well. And, you know, you have she's a good become this, like, huge activist. I know we won't talk about politics, but you know, she's, sure. she's, so, she's so smart and she's become this huge activist. And I see her out there. I see her on Instagram. I see her out there marching and, you know, expressing her voice and her views as an American. And then that's her right. And, She's out there doing it and uh, more power she to her. Walk, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she 
your money where your mouth is. And, and it's, a, it's, it's inspiring because a lot of people don't, you know. A lot of people do- just talk about it to pump up themselves, you know, and right. you can tell it's genuine with her, cause especially just from her Instagram posts on that. Oh. Um, so before uh, we're winding down here, but let's talk, I want to talk real quick about your life coach. How'd you become a life coach? And how did you come to the conclusion that you are a life coach? You, I mean, how did that happen? Um, well, you know, I wanted to go, when I went and got my master's degree, I really wanted to be a therapist. And I thought that I wanted to work with kids, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a specialty in school counseling and I'm also an ABA therapist, so I can work with kids that have, um, autism. But when I started working with, um, running the mom group, I found that, and after I had kids, I found that moms really were lacking voices. They were forgetting who they were and their, you know, identities were just getting lost in being moms. And so was sex. And so was, you know, friendships and all this stuff. And I think that it really resonated with me. Um, and I really wanted to help. And so I, I just sort of dove into, uh, using all of my training as a therapist and my various, I have a bunch of other, you know, kind of certifications in, not kind of, I have certifications in vocational counseling and rehab counseling and, um, and stuff like that. And so I thought, you know, I want to be able to work. It started out with just moms. It's, it's branched out into single people and dads as well, Oh wow! but I wanted to have to find, you know, help people find their voice again and enjoy life. Cause I think losing my sister specifically made me realize you know, how unbelievably short life is. And you really don't know when the end is coming. Mm -hmm. And I feel very clear that, you know, I used to say this to her before she died, like I was going to live for us both, but it shouldn't take losing somebody to recognize that, you know, there's a lot in life. You don't need to be stuck. We can all get through things. Uh, I think I've gone through a lot of you know, shitty things in my life. Um, <laughs> and I could have taken that and, you know, gone under a rock or become, you know, yeah. I, I half of who I am, but instead I felt like I wanted to give back. So think, that's why I do it. I think that's awesome. And uh, for someone to be able to do that is great. Uh, it's like, uh, I just woke up the other day and realized I was 49. Um, I, crazy. Yeah. I know I'm 47. I'm like, what? How did like, that happen? Holy crap. And I said, well, it's second lifetime. Right. It's uh, I just realized I only have one life. I had a dear friend pass away this year earlier, Sorry. young, you know, I couldn't believe it. Uh, my wife has had tragedy. You know, she lost both her brothers uh, over the last, you know, it's been a while. It's hard to deal with all those things, but I realized, you know what? can't change anything. Can't do anything. Just going to keep on moving, keep on having a good time, keep on being positive and uh, being a good influence on other people, hopefully. Well, I mean, I think this, this show and, and you using your voice to, you know, yeah. just talk to people and have let people relax and listen to conversations that does make a difference. Yeah. It does. Without all that politic, rah, rah, rah stuff. Uh, we don't, I don't uh, know. That <laughs> well, <laughs> Celia, I appreciate you taking time out, hanging out in your bedroom. All, it looks like you're bunkered <laughs> in there. Um, it's, my, it's my boy. It's my boy other room actually i'm sitting in, in his house so <laughs> well I, I appreciate you taking time and hanging out this friday night uh, with us uh and we're gonna let you go but hopefully we'll have you back on again um in, in the near future and we'll anytime and i'll see if i can rope us uh, you know jody into doing it with me yeah. next time she's around i'm sure she she'll come and chat anytime so Jody. remind people you have that podcast and are you doing other ones as well? You have many other ones? No, no, doing? for now it's just never thought I'd say this. And you can follow okay. us on Instagram or Facebook. I never thought I'd say this. You can follow me at the Celia Behar. Uh, Jody is Jody Sweeten. And you can email us at uh, never thought I'd at protonmail.com. All right. Well, we'll keep this up so people can get that. Uh, and uh, I do appreciate you taking time out Anytime. and hanging out with us here live in Portland uh, on TalkCast PDX, our new uh, community network. So we appreciate you. Awesome. I appreciate you too. Have an awesome night.
Well, joining us now is uh, Leather Stores. Uh, he's a local Yokel Portland guy, and uh, we met years ago when our kids played hockey together. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, you know, well, it's Portland, and it's anymore. I don't even, I don't even think twice. It's creepy. It's just uh, creepy. Do your kids still play hockey? No, I wish my son was good, but I think, you know, the travel and um, the kind of the ceiling as far as arenas yeah. and talent around here pushed him uh, into other sports. He plays basketball now Excellent. for the Franklin uh, varsity team if there's a season this year. Yeah, and same for my son. Uh, he got out of hockey, became a championship swimmer. So, um, right on. He, you know, he's gone to state, placed in the top seven. He's having a good time. But now he's going to swim in high school because he's a freshman this year. Aiden's a freshman. So, congratulations. Uh, he goes to go swim in high school, which will be cool. But that's neat that we've known each other for a while. And then we, uh, we, our paths crossed again in the cannabis world. Um, not too far back. Uh, you were at uh, Noble Rot for some time. You left there a while back. Um, tell me what you've been doing uh, since you left uh, the restaurant. So I left Noble Rot, and then I uh, went down to California to film a Netflix series called Cook with Cannabis. Yep, I watched it. I saw you on there. I was like, hey, I know that guy. I know that guy. Uh, yeah, I did that with Khalees and a, a host of other kind of funny little comedians and celebrities. It was a it was an extraordinary experience. I loved doing it. I wish to God that they had picked up a sep second season, but they didn't. And I, you know, I don't understand how those matrix work. I'm grateful for the experience. That was on Netflix, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Netflix is notorious for giving uh, one, maybe two seasons and then pull the plug on yeah. things, uh, especially if they're good. Uh, and uh, I did uh, see several episodes of your program and I, I was kind of flabbergasted that they didn't do a second season. That would have been kind of, I, I just don't understand why they didn't. What was their reason? They give you a reason? I wish. No, I think you know. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of algorithms and metrics that go into uh, deciding what they're going to do. I imagine they had some issues of positioning in terms of being family friendly. I mean, I, I, all I can do is speculate and just gotcha. say, "Gosh darn it," and hope that uh, that another opportunity like that comes around. Do you miss working in the kitchen at a restaurant? Do you miss well, that? no, because I'm back. You know, I'm yeah. Uh, I'm, that's true. I'm in a very different way. But uh, about a month, a month ago, I uh, opened a donut shop called right. Phil's, which is spelled F-I-L-L-S. Yes. Because we only do Phil donuts, and mm. I can't resist a pun. <laughs> um, and I've just been having a blast with that. It is one of the kind of few and unique brand slash business models that actually can work in this very crazy time. We have a really quick interface with the customers. They come in, they order their donuts, they walk out. We can enforce yeah. distance and uh, look yeah. after our customers. And yeah, it's been, it's been delightful. I really, I really enjoyed that. Well, I've been watching and following you on Instagram and uh, watching the progression of the donut, uh, um, from when you started to where you're at now. And it, you're right. It has taken off people talking about the donuts and um, you know, I can't wait to try some donuts. I'm not supposed to be eating those kinds of foods <laughs> at this moment, but I would love, I would love to uh, come try. Tell me um, the process of you got the idea and then you were here and you just said, let's do it. And you had a location, everything, or how long did it take you to get it going? It was kind of a combination of factors. So my buddy, Kurt Huffman, with whom I went to grade school and he was my best friend <laughs> wow. and I have been talking about donuts for years, kind of semi-seriously. And then mm -hmm. he's also got a project called Bar King and there's a bakery there. The baker's name is Catherine Bienvenuti and she is like, she's like a, a magician. Uh, <laughs> and she makes this remarkable brioche dough that we fry, and so it's just a, just a disc of dough, yeah. and then we fill it and glaze it and top it. And uh, she was very receptive to the idea of savory donuts, and her dough is not particularly sweet, uh, which allows us, you know, to really to really play, to really play with the genre, yeah. and um, and to do things that people don't expect to see in that form. Now, and, and that's been that's been really. I mean, honestly, I would say that my my experience in cannabis has certainly fueled the way 
that I think about donuts, you know, it's like, <laughs> we put some chicken liver in there, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things where I kind perfect. of start to bounce it around and people are like, that's idiotic. And I'm like, but wait a sec, but how about if we did this? And they're like, oh, I'm still not convinced. And then I'm like, how about shut up and eat it? And then all of a sudden they're like, darn it you were right <laughs> now now do you ever get a donut that you're like okay that doesn't work have you made one that's like I, you, do you keep uh, like a pad and write down ideas for donuts all day long or i'm you're... sure that i have a pad by the side of the bed where i wake up in the middle of the night and i'm like sauerkraut and ground beef and pork uh -oh. knuckles you know <laughs> <laughs> i think we're not no, that smoked was, that holy crap that that, that, coming up well, with some really weird stuff so far and you know i'm not i'm not goofing around with flavors in a way that's, yeah. that's disrespectful. I mean, most of the things that we do have <laughs> basis in tradition in other forms. Like for example, we do a donut called cheese plate for one. And right now it is a, a whipped manchego filling Oof. with quince paste on the top and then some Marcona almonds and a little bit more manchego cheese. Yeah. Now in Spain, the classic pairing for Manchego cheese is quince paste and Marcona almonds are like the national nut of Spain. <laughs> so for us to do that is not a reach for us to call it a donut is what makes people say you're crazy. But the <laughs> fact of the matter is it's a brioche bun uh, and, and having it be a donut using the word donut works very much in our favor because yes. it's, you know, really it's just bread and cheese and quince paste, which is awesome. Yeah. But when you call it a donut, then people feel like they're being adventurous and exciting, and and we're not taking a terrific risk. But but um, the semantics on, on on that really work in our favor, which has been it's been great. Do you uh, let's move over to the savory donuts for a second? When it comes to the savory donuts, what is like the most outlandish savory donut you've put together? Well, the one that we're doing right, we we've done two that I think have really blown people's skirts up one is uh the chicken liver mousse yeah yeah uh and we were serving that with grape mostarda and fried onions yum wow. uh and then i think the, the kind of the most ambitious donut uh that we'll have one more day which is tomorrow oh. um uh is the thanksgiving dinner and that one is a warm donut that we make when you order it the filling is mashed potatoes and gravy and it's got a little cranberry glaze, Ooh. chicken <laughs> cracklings, which is fried chicken skin, and then fried sage. So it's like it's the stony sandwich you make when you raid the kitchen on Thursday late night in a donut. You just got everybody here on a Friday night. He's high as a gourd here in the uh, city of Portland, wanting a donut now. You, you need like you need like a midnight counter where people can come by and just pick up a twelve pack. Wait, of donuts. wait. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the fills uh, on the average, how many donuts do you guys have? Different types of donuts do you have at the shop? Like, do you we have, like have four or five? Do you have a special uh, one every day, or yeah, we we have a couple special ones every day. We always have. Um, uh, five or six sweet donuts, and then uh, from from two to four savory donuts. So, you know, eight eight or nine donuts a day, um, and they range from three dollars up to all the way up to the Thanksgiving dinner was five fifty. Um, yeah. So they're you know they're kind of like blue star price range, but they're big donuts. They uh, require a certain amount of handwork, and and uh, so far. Uh, our customers have, have found them to be really rewarding. And that's they're not been, your father's donuts, that's for sure. You, know, you can get your funk and go nuts uh, situation. Is what it sounds donuts. Like. <laughs> I did not realize how true that was until my schedule switched until 4.30 wake up, which I'm still, still trying to get around to. Those old Winchell's commercials come flashing back. My guy's old time to make the donuts. Uh, it's like 3 a.m. I'm living it. I'm living it. <laughs> Um, so the donuts are going great. Now, can people get them delivered or do they have to come by and pick them up? Or do you have a website where they can order? We have what you got Phil's, going on? Our Phil's Donuts website, which is philsdonuts.com. I think it might be Phil's Donuts PDX. Uh, there's a link there to order and pick up. 
-hmm. We are adding DoorDash and Caviar this week. Wow. So uh, we we really needed to get our feet under us. We were we were kind of getting our ass kicked. And as much as I like to sell out of donuts, I don't like to disappoint people who have driven all the way downtown because as we know that's like that's an investment. But, so we wanted to make sure that <clears throat> we were fulfilling the customers who were making the trip before we felt like we could step up and add delivery and uh, online. But that uh, we're getting more and more, as they say in the tech world, robust. And um, so we feel like our offerings are are expanding and the ways to get our donuts are increasing. And we will be opening probably in the next two weeks, seven days a week. Wow. Okay. So going to the full seven days a week, uh, delivery, yeah. the whole thing. And uh, can I order online, pre-order and all that, right? Yeah, totally. Great. Great. Um, we'll put your link up on our website uh, at TalkCast PDX where, where you can get a donut from uh, Phil's Donuts. I, I'm excited. I need to try them. Uh, like I said, I keep reading about them and uh, I got to get, <laughs> I got to get one. I yeah, wish I would have had one right here. Really, I could show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so well, I know I used to say uh, when I used to rap with you and stuff when our kids were younger, you used to say that this was like the favorite, your favorite time of the year because of all the cooking and all the goodies and all this stuff. What do you, what do you got planned for Thanksgiving dinner? Well, Thanksgiving dinner is going to be pretty quiet, um, but I'm going to do a turkey breast, kind of pounded out uh, and then filled with a pork tenderloin. Oh my God! It'll get rolled and then roasted. Oh, Probably like a classic green bean casserole, mashed potatoes, because if I don't, my kids will revolt. Uh, just a <laughs> salad. And then um, one other green vegetable that has yet to be determined. Are you planning anything special uh, for Christmas dinner? I haven't, I haven't even gotten that far yet. I know that <laughs> our next savory donut is going to be kind of Christmassy. I'm doing a braised beef filled donut. Uh -huh. with gorgonzola and potato straws and fried onions on it oh my god that <laughs> that sounds really good i'm like drooling <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Uh, uh, but uh well i this uh, I'm, I'm really appreciative that you came on the program you know we have our local studio here going on now here in portland hopefully we'll get you down to the studio when we can have people here at the studio do the COVID like yeah due to COVID 19 right now we're pretty much just zooming everybody we're zooming 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 and I'm just uh, glad I figured this damn thing out. I feel like such an old man. I'm just. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you see me? Hello. <laughs> uh, are you there? Oh, just... <laughs> well, uh, I, again, Leather, I appreciate you coming on tonight. It's Friday night fun here on the Justin McDonald show. And uh, people go check out Phil's Donuts. Leather's going to be open seven days a week soon. And from what it sounds like, you're going to have to buy like a dozen donuts because it's going to have. You're not going to be able to eat one. And if you come into a room and you have a donut and nobody else has a donut, that's just wrong. I hope you brought enough to share. <laughs> yeah, we learned that lesson early on in uh, kindergarten and first grade. So right on. All right, my man. Oh, have a have a nice Friday night. Uh, rest of your night. Have pop a nice beer. Kick back, relax, and uh, just of course, I uh, want to just say how much we appreciate you. Uh, of course coming on the show and just representing Portland as well. My pleasure, man. There's not too many of us natives. I got to keep crowing. <laughs> That's right. Well, again, thank you again and have a great night. All right, Justin. Thank you. Take care.
Well, that's going to do it for tonight's show. I want to thank my guest, Celia Behar, and I want to thank Leather Stores. Thank you both uh, for coming on tonight. Uh, it's been fun. Always a good time. Uh, make sure you keep having a good time on your Friday night. Like I always say, have a little Tokeski, have a little uh, Pops of Brewski, uh, whatever you're doing. Just have a great time and enjoy yourself. Be kind to one another. And thank you so much for listening to the Justin McDonald Show. Hey, if you want to buy a Funkin' Gonuts t-shirt, okay, just go to my website, thejustinmcdonaldshow.com, and you can buy it right there. There's other great shirts that we have as well. It'll help support the show. And then, of course, go to talkcastpdx.com if you want to listen to the program anytime. Also, check out other great programs like Citizen Smith. Check out uh, Channel Zero with Clyde Lewis, which is awesome. Into the Parabnormal, Teaming with Tips with Jeff Lowenfels. we got more programs coming. So much fun. Yes, indeed. Have a great Friday night. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Peace out.